So at the top of facts about derivatives, set up a table. So you tell me. I think you know this. What happens to f? I guess I should be more specific here. If f prime is positive, what does that mean about f? It's increasing. And it's probably easiest to work our way all the way across. That way we're thinking f prime the whole time here. So if f prime is negative, what does that tell me about f? It's decreasing. If f prime is 0 or undefined, what do we call that? That's a critical point or a critical number. which means it's a possible extrema. All right, thinking back to our, our road map there, first derivative equals 0 means you might have an extreme there, and then you take one of those three paths to figure out if it's a max or a min. If f prime changes signs, what does that mean is happening? A relative extrema, good. And let's be clear, f has a relative extrema. And then which one it is depends on which way the sign is changing. But if it changes, we know there's a max or a min there. Just now realize I should maybe add another column to this. F prime basically tells us the slope of F. So now my, my chart is all out of whack here. I had a column to the left. F prime tells the slope. What does F double prime tell us about F? Concavity. It's concave up, concave down. If F double prime is positive, what does that mean about f? Yes, that's right. Um, careful on this box because I'm going to put another. I'm going to put a second line in here. If f double prime is positive, do you remember what that means about f prime? Increasing. If f prime is increasing, then that makes a, a concave up. A, concave up graph. Well, the next blank should be easy. If f double prime is negative, then f is concave down, and f prime is decreasing. If f double prime is 0 or undefined, that's what we keep saying we wish we had a name for. And people are making up names for it in other classes or maybe even in here. Like They want to call it something. Like It's important because you set the second derivative equal to 0. Those are the points that go on the number line. Um, one group called it a second degree critical point. Um, somebody called it a critical point part 2. Like I, there, People want to have a name for it so you can say, oh, those are my, but there's not a name for it. The critical points of the second derivative, that's not officially right, but that's what people usually call them. Because those are possible, possible what? What are those? Possible points of inflection. But that's why we go to the number line. We test the intervals. If it changes signs, if f double prime changes signs, then f has a point of inflection. That's a lot of information. Let's see if this makes sense. So again, these are things that we kind of know, sort of know, supposed to know. Um, so I'll read through them. I'll make a little bit of comment about them. But if you've got questions or if something doesn't make sense, please stop and we'll draw pictures and figure it out. Number one, a critical number occurs at an x value of f where the derivative is 0 or undefined. All relative min and max will occur at a critical number. I feel like we've said that 10 times already. 
We good on that one? Number two, F prime is positive IFF. You remember what that means from geometry, I think? If and only if. Do you know what that means? It means that this is a, a bi-directional statement, right? So it's not like if it's a square, then it's a rectangle. Like, okay, that works one way, but it doesn't work the other way. If it's a rectangle, it's not necessarily a square. If and only if means you can go either direction with this. So f prime is positive is equivalent to f is increasing. Like those, those mean the same thing is another way to say it. That means if f is increasing, then f prime is positive. You can go back either way. Those are tied together. f prime is negative. f is decreasing. Those go together in the same way. Number four. A relative maximum occurs at an x value where f prime goes from positive to negative. F prime positive to negative would mean F goes from increasing to decreasing, so that makes a relative max. Number five, a relative minimum occurs where F prime goes from negative to positive because F would change from decreasing to increasing. Now, those two pieces put together, that's the first derivative test where you draw the number line, and check the intervals, and see where it changes. That's the first derivative test. Number six, if x equals c is a critical number, and the second derivative is positive, then f of x has a relative minimum. OK, critical number means f prime is 0 or undefined. Second derivative is positive means concave up. So this is where you would like draw the picture. Concave up, second derivative or first derivative zero. Yeah, that makes a relative minimum. Number seven is kind of the same thing. Um, we're concave down. Critical number means horizontal tangent line. Then there's a relative maximum. Those two things put together is the second derivative test. First derivative test, you do a number line with the critical points. Second derivative test, you do the second derivative at the critical points, see if they're positive or negative. So that's that first derivative test versus second derivative test is sometimes tricky. All right, the next several I think are easy. If the second derivative is greater than zero, then f is concave up. If the second derivative is less than zero, then f is concave down. Those kind of go together. If f prime is increasing, OK, so if the slope is increasing, then f of x is concave up. Yeah, that makes sense. 11 is the same thing the other way. f prime is decreasing. So if the slopes are getting smaller, then it's concave down. If f of x is concave up, then the second derivative is greater than 0. Yep. f prime is increasing. Oh, here's a new thing we haven't said yet. Tangent lines are below the curve. Well, we haven't said that yet, but if you draw something that's concave up, any tangent line you draw is below the curve. That's one of those things where you would memorize that, but if that question showed up, and the answer was above, below, or neither, or something like that, well, you would 
you would draw out what it said and then realize, oh, yeah, all the tangent lines are below. Number 13, if f of x is concave down, second derivative is negative, f prime is decreasing, tangent lines are above. Again, pick a couple points, sketch a tangent line. They're all above the curve. Again, it's not a memorized thing. That's a sketch it and figure it out kind of thing. A point of inflection occurs at an x value where the second derivative changes signs. Yeah, so that's like if f double prime changes from positive to negative, then whatever that x value is is a, a point of inflection. Same thing as f prime changing from increasing to decreasing, or vice versa. Because if f prime is increasing, that means f double prime is positive. And then lastly, and this goes all the way back to lesson 3.1, the first day of this unit, absolute max or min on an interval, on an interval meaning check the endpoints, occur at endpoints, and there it is again, or the critical numbers. And how do you figure out where those maxes and mins are for an absolute <coughs> max or min? What's the process for this one? Think back to the roadmap. That's the table of values. And you plug them into f. Not f prime, because we're not concerned with increasing, decreasing. We're just concerned with who's the biggest and who's the smallest. Make sure you have the endpoints on your table as well, as well as the critical points, or the critical values. Yes, no, thoughts, comments? Okay, any comments on this side? Okay, hopefully that's reminders rather than new stuff, but I think it makes a good uh, kind of study guide heading into the test, which is next block day.